This week I'm in Dallas for Vid Summit, but I was still able to watch The Exorcist Believer. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comments section. Share your thoughts on The Exorcist Believer. My thoughts aren't the right thoughts, they're just my thoughts and I would love to hear yours. One more thing before we get started, this video is brought to you by Audible. I'm a big fan of Audible because I like to read with my ears, not my eyes, so I have been a subscriber ever since 2015 and actually in preparation for the new Exorcist film coming out, I checked out the book The Exorcist legacy. It's a behind the scenes book on the whole franchise going back to the writing of the original novel and then the production of each film, the TV show, and even interviews about the new film that hasn't even come out yet. And I listened to it on Audible. If you're a big fan of the Exorcist franchise, want to do a deep dive, I do recommend checking out that book and you can listen to it for free at audibletrial.com slash Sean Chandler. Also, The Exorcist is based off of a book which you can also listen to on Audible at audibletrial.com slash Sean Chandler. You can get a free audiobook of your choice as well as a free 30-day trial of Audible at that link. The information is down below in the description and let's get started with the review. And I'll just cut right to the chase. I was not a fan of this film. I went into it pretty skeptical because I didn't think that David Gordon Green was the right person to tackle the Exorcist franchise. This is the guy that did the last trilogy of Halloween films. And while I was a big fan of Halloween 2018, I think there was significant drop in quality each movie afterwards. But more importantly, Halloween and Exorcist aren't the same thing. The simplicity of Halloween is what makes it so great and the depth and layers of The Exorcist are what make it great. They're not the same thing. They're not comparable. They're very different classics for very different reasons. And then when I saw the trailer and saw that they were going the legacy sequel route, I also don't think that that really works with The Exorcist because Chris is not Laurie Strode. It's not the same thing. And so I had a lot of concerns going in and the movie itself essentially confirmed every fear that I had. And to be totally fair, I mean, it's a slick production. There's a, a lot of kind of effort put into trying to create an uneasy feeling. There's a lot of editing tricks in the way that it like cuts between things happening. So it's very slick, very produced film. But it also just feels like just another possession film. And a lot of these have come out over the last 15 years. And there's not much in here to distinguish it from all the other movies in the genre besides the fact that it has ties back to the most famous film in this genre and of course is in the same franchise. But as for the movie itself, it's just another one of these movies. Even the setup when it comes to our main character and his family dynamic feels like, well, we've seen this arc before. And then the motivation for some stuff that goes on with his daughter that kind of leads to the things going on. It doesn't feel like something from the Exorcist franchise, but it does feel like something from any number of other movies just like this. I think even movies that kind of came out fairly recently too. So like, okay, that feels familiar. And so it just feels like another one of these movies that I've seen it before, I've seen it done better. This one just happens to be in the Exorcist franchise and maybe has a little bit more of a budget. So it's just a little slicker in the way that it does things. And as I mentioned, the acting all here is fine. The, the lead actor in particular, he can carry a film like this. You can feel sympathy for him in all the scenarios that he's in. But the story and where it goes just didn't work for me. The first half, as I just said, just felt very familiar. Like I've seen this before, I've seen this before. And uh, it, it just felt like pulling elements from 
Exorcist knockoffs into the Exorcist franchise, which feels cheap. And then we start kind of doing the cameo game. And so it's like, well, this one is an official Exorcist movie because see, remember her from the old movie? But she doesn't have anything to do in the film. And it's well documented. The book that I mentioned, The Exorcist Legacy, has interviews with the actress where she talks about how she's always turned down Exorcist sequels. She turned this one down when they first asked her and the director went, hey, I'll bring you a script, just read it. And then she said, she read the script when he brought it to her, she turned it down. And then they offered her more money than she'd ever been offered before and she turned it down. And then they doubled the most money she'd ever been offered and she turned it down again. And she had a quote where she said, essentially, I felt like, you know, as they were trying to make a deal with the devil or something like that. She literally described it as a deal with the devil. And the reason she signed on was because she was like, okay, with that money, I can fund this scholarship that I really think needs to exist. So she saw a good cause and decided, okay, I'll do it for that reason. Not because she believed in the script. And so they bring back this actress after 50 years that didn't come back for the second one, did third, and it had never came back before. She comes back for this one and they don't really give her anything to do. A weekend rewrite, you could easily take her out of the film. So she's, she's only in it for a little bit and doesn't really have a pivotal role. And even what they do with her character, it's like, what, what, you brought her back for that? And it just feels like, they wanted her in the trailer and they wanted her in the movie to have strong ties to the previous one. But this is not like the completion of some arc that she had because she's not, not like a Laurie Strode character in that sense. There's not that thing to, to finish here. So she's just there and they're trying to like force some narrative, some purpose for her to be here, but it doesn't make a lot of sense and she's wasted entirely. It's just, okay, yeah, she was in the trailer. We got a couple cool lines, a couple cool moments, but she doesn't serve a true plot purpose in the film. But even up to that point in the time, the first two thirds of it, I was kind of tracking along and this movie absolutely lost me when it actually got to the exorcism and how it plays out I didn't think it fit with the rest of the franchise and the mythology that's established. Uh, one of my friends, Leo, described it as the exorcism Avengers. When you see the movie, you'll know what we're talking about. I was like, are you seriously doing this? Is this is what, where you're headed with this? It, it's message as like this, can't we all just get along vibe to it of like, friendship power will save the day it has a vibe like that i was like are we, is this really where we're headed with the third act of this movie i just i didn't like i didn't think it fit but also thought it was corny i, I like it was kind of like eye roll inducing um and then it's just a lot of long shots of like screaming without having much interesting new to do. Like it's, well, you have to have this little beat from the first one, you have to have something like this. And, you, and it, everything's shocking, everything that's supposed to be like, ooh, is just a tamer version of something that was done 50 years ago. And so it's not creative, it's not original, it's not new and different. It's just like a muddled, confused version of it. And even on like the, the faith side to it, where I, I even earlier today, um, here at the lobby of the hotel, someone was talking to me like, hey, why do, how do you feel about watching a movie like The Exorcist in light of being a Christian? And I, I mean, I understand the question because it dwells, the franchise dwells so much in darkness, but at the same time, the premise of the franchise has always been that the existence of evil proves the existence of God. And if there is this evil, there must be good. And there's, there is this tri like good triumphs over evil vibe. And so much of that even gets muddled in this film to where like, I was uncomfortable with this film. Like, what are you communicating? What are you saying? Where are you going with this? And like, this is the first one, like all of them have a degree to which it's dwelling in so much evil that that does like make, make me feel uncomfortable in that sense. This one like kind of offended me and put a bad taste in my mouth with where it went, how it went there, and just kind of how like crass and, and nasty in a different sense than 
Crash, <laughs> the original had that, but it was for a different purpose. And where this one kind of goes with plot points, how things are resolved, did not sit well with me at all. Like I, I was like, really, oh, really, this is what we're doing? We're like rolling my eyes, and I was like, oh, oh, I don't, I don't like this. And it only kind of kept getting worse and worse. And the the exorcism was the part where this movie just lost me. And even in the final moments, the movie's trying so hard to be profound. It's trying so hard to be meaningful that, I, I mean, it just go, I felt just desperate attempts to capture the meaning and depth of the original one, but it's just a bad copy. That's what it feels like. It's trying really hard without actually having the depth or the substance or anything that was in the original one. This kind of exploration of um, faith, doubt, all these things that was there. This is just trying to copy that without feeling real. It felt artificial and it felt like someone that couldn't embrace um, the idea of promoting Catholicism, Christian faith, anything like that. So it had to have a different message, but sort of in the same ballpark, but not stepping on the toes. And it just got so muddled that it, <laughs> for that reason, did step on my toes. So this movie to me did not work. Um, there's some slickness. There's, there's some moments that kind of work. There's some organic humor, not like inappropriate, but like just in a very bleak, dark film just a few moments that break the tension. So there, there's some craft here, but the, the idea of the movie, the story is just too generic. It's pulling in from the knockoffs of The Exorcist. It's pulling in from kind of generic thrillers, lost kids and things like that. We've seen it before. And then it just goes off the rails in the third act. And it, it just was trying to be profound when it had absolutely nothing to say. Overall, I'm gonna go with a C- minus on the entertainment scale. Let's go with a 5 out of 10 for the slickness and skip it. I don't even think you need to see this one if you're an Exorcist fan. I just don't think it has anything new, fresh, or interesting to offer. But if you would like to know more about the Exorcist franchise, check out that book. You can get it for free at the link down below in the description if you sign up for a free trial of Audible at audibletrial.com slash Sean Chandler. I found the book to be very interesting, even included some elements of it in this review. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.